Jay Shea. This morning, for the next 45 minutes or so, let us glorify the one. First, we go to the feet of the one, Sri Ganesha. In this session, we sing the glories of Lord Ganesha, the Lord of the Gardens, the destroyer of all obstacles in the spiritual path or practices. And as we embark, or we have embarked on this project to save our life, to construct the school for girls in Bihar. This morning, as one family, we ask the one Sri Ganesha to remove any potential obstacles that may stand in the way from we, us, all of us being successful in creating this gem of an institution for beautiful daughters in the heart. Hey, 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 hey,
such a very special day. You know, when we close the year here, my parents and us tell you, we grow up together in Trinidad. The last session is always very sentimental, very emotional. You can feel it already. Why is this? We can all gather and get on a plane or get on a bus and travel to some, visit some temple or some other religious, maybe at one of the child hands. But you see when we sit amongst each other like this in satsang and we remove all the barriers, we take off the lenses, don't take off the glasses, eh? we take off, we remove the lenses that prevent us, prevent us from seeing the beautiful souls that are in front of us. And here we go and start looking for God. God is right here. Last night we covered the Gata, we don't limit God, just to the Murti. When we go into the scriptures, like last time we understand who is Hanumanji, who is Rama, could, they, could the, the glories of God fit in simple texts or in a Murti? Let's draw an example, a perfect example this morning. Today is Sunday. On a Sunday we worship who? Surya Naanayanji. A living representation of God made no mistake. Have you ever asked the question, who or what powers the sun? Is it by, by chance? Is there a volcano in there? Perhaps sometime when we sit for Navratri, I will explain to you how that process works. The sun, Surya Narayan, is powered by none other than the Divine Mother herself, the Protectress, Bhavani Shankarma. That energy that emanates from the sun is so powerful, could we contain it in a murti? Devotees, there's nothing wrong, with, I'm not condemning or criticizing. I'm just giving you a drawing a reference. This morning, let us take three minutes and glorify the Lord, one of the Navagrahas, Surya Narayan. When I was a little boy growing up in Trinidad, maybe at the age of four or five, my parents were in college and I was staying with my Aji. And every morning she would get up and she would take a bath and she would wake me up with her. Come now, take a bath and come with me. I said, Aji, I want to sleep. What are you talking about? It's seven o'clock. No, get up, take a bath and come. And she would go downstairs and ask me to make her go pick that red hibiscus flower and bring it for me. And she would take her ordi, cover half her head, and the other half of the ordi is on her hands like this. Place the load of water there and ask me to put the red hibiscus. She come, stand next to me, son. Pray to the sun. I was like, what this crazy lady tell me I would pray to the sun? But I didn't know. I didn't know. My, my Aji never attended a single day of school. She, she was illiterate. She could not read or write. But she knew the power of Surya Narayan. And she had one of the biggest hearts that I've ever known. Beautiful soul. This morning, let us see the blessings of that Surya Dev Bhagavan. Adi Dev Bhagavan. Om Bhaskaraya Vidamari Dimagaraya Dimari Tanna Surya Prachodaya Yugyam Namani
us as Mary when we sing the line, we always glorify Mahavir Swami, Father Bhutta Hanumanji, because he's always present. When the Avatar of Lord Rama came to an end, and Hanumanji, of course, being Rama Bhutta, was ready for him, Lord Rama says, No, no, Hanumanji, I want you to stay on this, in this land, in this, in this time, and remain here until the end of time, until the end of this age of Kali. And wherever my name is being sung, please be there. Yes, who is here this morning with us? Mahavir Swami is glorified. Prince of Almighty, Ajnoji,
God has a plan for all of us. And two nights ago, I read a message from him and it brought me to tears. It broke me down. His mother, who is 61 years, years old, has been diagnosed with stage 3 cancer. He asked the question, well, how come the child is giving his life every single breath is to help those that are in need? And God, you're taking away mom. This is called karma. This is devotees. This is called karma. Karma. Karma bhal. Perhaps there are some activities or actions that now she has to go through, or he has to go through, to take care of Ma in her final days and final stages. You may have heard this statement before. There are two certificates in our lives that we are never present when they are created. The first one is a birth certificate. What's the second one? We know that one very well. But what is more important, devotees, is what happens or what we do from the time of birth the life certificate is created to the time of death when the other one is created. What happens in between that's most important. You see what we are doing here this morning? Wearing satsang. That is very important. What that does, by well, yeah, one of the Pandit spoke, I mean Panajo spoke last night about a spiritual bank account. Doing seva is building your spiritual bank account. Singing the name of God like we are this morning on the past two sessions is building that spiritual bank account. And that spiritual bank account pays more interest than TV and social bank and these fellows could ever dream about. And that interest is spiritual interest. That is the interest that's going to take us from this physical mortal plane back to God, yet the way we have all gone. That is the goal of life. Last time I asked the question, May Kongu, May Kahangu, who am I and where am I going? Until we answer those questions, we'll remain right here and come back in the cycle of birth and death again. This body is, you identify this body as Pandit the soul is not Pandalil, the soul belongs to Bhagavan. Like every single one of us. Bhagavad Gita chapter 2 verse 20 tells us, Nainam chinnanti shastrani, Nainam dahati pavaka, Na chainam kledu yankyabu, Na shushati madhata. This soul cannot be cut by a knife, it cannot be burned by, by fire, you cannot drown it in water. It has no race, no creed, no caste, no color, and it belongs to no country, it certainly doesn't have a passport. It only belongs to God. And the day we realize that Siyara, my Sabajagajani, Karahu Pranam, Jodi Jukapani, we are all but one. Then the finger pointed, the three pointed back, doesn't work like that. Then we'll join the both palms together and say, Namaste. The divinity in me recognizes the divinity in you. Jai Shri Ram. Now we are down to 20 minutes. I promised last time we had a discussion about time because we have a, we have a, a plethora of things to do this morning, which I totally understand because we are here to save up a life. But let us maximize this time as we dive now into beautiful scriptures of Sri Ramchandramanas. Ramayan Sumiran, Joe Sumiran, Siddhartha, Gardana, Yen, Gardi, Vadi, Yen, Yeah.
they are not alone, they are never alone. And on that note, as a pundit, it's my duty to share this with the children as well. If you feel that you are threatened, if you feel that you are bullied, if you feel isolated and you do not have someone to speak with, you can speak to me, I will listen confidentially. Brothers and sisters, when service is undertaken by power-hungry people, I repeat, when service is undertaken by power-hungry people or under compulsion or imaginative urges, there's a word in Trinidad called Mamaga, you all remember this one? It results in more harm than good. It, more harm than good, you're fooling yourself. A sincere aspirant, the undertaking of service must avoid any egotism of himana, hankar, any exhibitionism, annamara, and favoritism of himana. When we sit to sing a bhajan, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. When we sit to sing a bhajan, it must never be to entertain. It must never be who can play the loudest instrument, the keyboardist, the drummer, the harmonium, or who can clap the loudest. When you sing a bhajan, the goal should be to uplift, to inspire, to empower, to make the murtis cry, the murtis, I've seen this in my own eyes. When you sing, the murtis should cry because we are singing with so much love. And when you offer love to God, guess what you, what you get in return? Ten times the amount of love. Baba says, when you take one step to, towards me, I will take ten towards you. Make no mistake. But when you do it, you leave all these things behind. The ego, the ahamkar, all this nonsense, leave it behind. And you go submit 100% to God. So too, when you perform these acts of seva, submit to God. Go all out. Don't do it halfway. Sometimes, you know, I do, we do calls to India. We don't know Sometimes we go to the Ganges to take a bath in Hariba. God forbid, some people walk around like this. You are going to bathe, take a dip in perhaps the most purest water that exists in this world. We perform puja with Gangajal. And this is the reaction. There is Sri Ram. We we'll leave that right there. Before embarking on any service project, introspect and examine whether your heart is filled with service love. Are you ready to do this? Do you really want to do this? Because if you are not, don't do it. You create more harm. It's all about humility and compassion. Whether your head is full of intellect, understanding and knowledge of the problem or the solution, whether your hands are eager to offer the healing tools or the healing touch or that hug and whether you can gladly spare and share time, energy and the skill to the, of those who are in dire need. The words of Bhagavan Sri Sachi Sai Baba, I quote, The act of service is not to be judged. The act of service according, is not to be judged according to the cost or the publicity it entails. And we have a lot of that today. Let's go on to social media. Again, I'm not, I'm not here to criticize anybody. It may be the only, it may only be the cup of the offering of a cup of water. You all have been to be happy. You all have done it with your own hands. I've seen you. Maybe just a simple cup of water. Or telling someone, Ma, Pa, Bhaya, Didi, Uncle, Auntie, don't worry, I love you. We'll take care of you. Simple as that. But the need of the recipient, the mood of the person who offers, this will decide whether the act is that of gold or lead. Which one are we offering today? I hope it's gold, so now. Let no one suffer the slightest pain as a result of your thought, your word and your deed. I repeat, this perhaps is just this entire again. Let no one suffer the slightest pain of your thought, your word, and your deed. And let me add one more to that, your neglect. Let this be our sadhana, our spiritual discipline. It will surely help us to achieve that goal. And that goal is, where are we going? And that is back to Godhead. 
भगवान श्री सच्चे साई बाबा की जय Friday night, we spoke of the sage Vishwamitra who, as we mentioned, wrote or composed the Gayatri Mantra. Vishwa, the universe, Mitra, friend, friend of the universe. Yagyas and so forth were being formed in the forest, but the demons would come and they would throw blood, they would throw fresh flesh on the being, and make that yagya come under. Then they will scare boot and brain so forth. You know, they will scare away all of the holy people. That will come to perform these yagyas. So the sage Vishwamitra decided that he is going to go to the city of Ayodhya to see the king Dashyu. He went and he asked, because you remember from Katha on Friday night, he asked for Rama and Lakshman. King Dashyu was very distraught. The king wanted to go himself. He offered himself with his whole army and his entourage to go, but leave my children at home. We as parents will always try to protect our children. But Dashyu was not aware at the time that Rama. Was the incarnation of Sri Hari himself. The same Vishwamitra told the King Dashar that Rama is indeed the incarnation of Sri Hari, and he is the only one capable. Him and Lakshman are the only ones capable of destroying those demons. It's not a mere, it's not a simple task. And then, like any sanatris, the Guru was brought in. And who was the Guru? Guru Vashishtha. And Guru also tried to convince Dashar to send the boys into the forest. It is here where our class stopped on Friday night, and it is from this point for the next 15 minutes that we will think the class will continue. Lakshman, who was with Rama in the course, he noticed his father's mental weakness, and he says, "Pitaji, father, why are you so serious? Why are you crying?" He said, "The battlefield is our legitimate arena. It is our rightful duty." To save God, righteousness, and it is our genuine responsibility. Lakshman speaks. Lakshman speaks very little in Ramayana, but here are some powerful statements. He says, "The service of the sages and the maintenance of moral good are our very breath. The service of selflessness is the very breath of saving our life." He says, "Lakshman, I am surprised that you are sad, as we would like to embark on such a glorious task." The world will laugh at you, O Father, for your display of weakness, cowardice. Send us with your loving blessings. Lakshman says, "I will accompany my Priya and return with glory and victory." Ram saw his father being overpowered by affection for him. Lakshman had a very soft heart, him like most fathers, and he was moved towards the throne and he held his hand lovingly, and he says, "Father, Pitaji." It appears that you have forgotten who you are. Remember who you are. In which royal family, immortalized by which forefathers, were you born, and how much goodness they had attained? Then you won't be as you are doing right now, my dear brothers and sisters. In most cases, whenever we are challenged in this day and age of Kali, I like you to take, if you can, go back. To whom or what your Aji, Aja, Nani, and Nana stood for? What morals did they bring with them, or in, were instilled with them? Most of us, I think, will probably be fourth and fifth, fourth and fifth generation. We may have some third generation Indian. When I say third generation, three generations that travel from India to the Caribbean and the West Indies, probably have some close from India as well. And go back now to your great Aja, great Aji. You can remember them. I don't mind. Passed away many years ago. Great Nani and Great Nani. What are the things that they stood for? What are some of the teachings that they instilled in our parents, who then instilled into us, hopefully? And then you will see the greatness of your lineage, your guru. Let's take a minute now, not even a minute, thirty seconds, and let's try to think back that lineage. This is what Lord Rama is trying to ask his father to remember. Remember from where you have come from. Remember your father, my aunt. You took the birth of the Ikshvaku dynasty, pa. Till this day, you spent your years as the embodiment of dharma. You are aware that there is no greater sin than retracting the word once given. We spoke about this Friday night. Once you give someone a word, you do not retract it. Prana jai, par vachana jai. 
He says, going back on your words now that you have given to the sage will tarnish your fame eternally. Your sons will not tolerate this, Rama is speaking. Your son and father will never tolerate this. The bride of victory will certainly support us. Don't hesitate. Instead, bless us and entrust us to the sage. Rama pleaded thus, and he bent, bent his head low and touched his father's feet. Dasha drew Rama closer to him now and he began to fondle his head, to play with his hair. Son, all that you have said to me today is true. Your words are gems of great worth. I am not a fool to deny them. And Rama broke into a smile. He says, Father, Pitaji, what is this weakness? You speak of thrusting us into the tiger's mouth. Believe us to be the cubs, the lion cubs. Send us on this sacred task with your blessings. Kings must never delay the sacred tasks. And hearing Rama's sharp remarks now, the Guru Vashishtha rose and says, Excellent, Dashrat, did you hear the lion's roar? Arise, send a message to the mothers and fetch them. Place your sons at the service of Vishwamitra. Then Dasha felt that he couldn't do anything else but to obey the words of the Guru. He sent messages now for the queens to come. Devotees, the mothers came now. And when the mothers arrived, the situation became a little more tense because fathers will protect their children, but there's no one in this world who will ever love you like your mother. Trust me when I tell you that. The world will turn their back on you. Mahabhuna. And you see the Divine Mother? Once you go under her protection, the protectress, walk proud, walk brave, and hold your head up, knowing that Ma has got your hand. Make no mistake. Bhavani Shankar Mata Ki Jai. Devotees, the queens now came with their veils over their heads out of respect for the gurus and the sage, and they touched the feet of the sages. And then Dashrat now moved towards the children, and he stood side by side to Rama and Lakshman. Fondling, loving fingers like this to the crown of their heads, playing with their hair, messing up their hair, so to speak, with love. And then Vashishta spoke first. He said, Mothers, babies, our Rama and Lakshman are ready to leave with Vishwamitra in order to guard this yajna that he performs from any inter interference and obstruction by demonic forces. Please give them your Ashiva, your blessings, before they depart. Then Kaushila raised her hand. Kaushila raised her head up, she's like, what? You know how a typical mother would react? What? Are these little saplings, she's calling them saplings now. Are these saplings to guard and protect the right that a great sage is celebrating? And while Kaushila was saying this now, her hand also began to caress Rama's head and she thought. She said the sage is nursing this desire and craving in fulfillment in order to fulfill the supreme light of peace. He might have put forward a request to test the king's attachment to his children. Or how else can we believe that these tiny spouts of tenderness will guard from harm of the rights of those sage performing the yajna? Mata Kaushilya is also unaware this time of the divinity of her sons. Dasha, who was listening to her speak, suddenly realized of the truth in a flash. You know, he got a, he got a flash. And arrived at a bold decision. And he said, Yes, harm. Kaushilya's words convey authentic truth. This is but a plan to test me, and I am certainly going to pass this test. He said, Master, speaking to the Guru, how can I weaken and counter your test? I will abide by a wish, whatever it is, that pass through. Devotees, we go to the beach now, free out of the manas, as Kosamitu Sikashiras, as we see what happens next. Rama and Dada.
And if everything is dedicated to the Lord, there will be no room for worry, for sorrow, or even joy. There will be equanimity, peace, unruffled with him, through any circumstances. Once we rid ourselves of these attachments, Shanti, peace, can never be disturbed. I, my, mine, my own, your, yours. When these ideas take hold of the mind, Shanti suffers, it's constricted. And to get the attitude of sincerity, or sincerely offering to Him, Prema is essential, Prema is love. Prema combined, combined with faith is oneself. Love as flow is truth. Love as thought, sorry, is truth. Love as action is right conduct. Love as understanding is peace. And love as feeling is non-violence. This is what's called empty. Cultivate it in every day. And cultivate them in joy. May the blessings of Mariyana Purushottam Bhagavan Shri Ramachandri be upon this school project. For the girls in Bihar. Yeah, can you come up with a name for this school here? Yeah? Alright, I'll give you some more. And every initiative taken on the Seva for life, may Mariyala Purushottam Bhagavan Shri Ramachandraji bless the Hanumanji, Lord Ganesha, the Divine Mother, remove any and all of any impediments or obstacles. May everyone here today, this morning, and who has joined over the last two nights, and those of you joining all over the world this morning, virtually, so lovingly, like a true community of love and service, be blessed with success. And peace. I have been totally and I am totally humbled and I'm still in awe of your invitation to sit amongst you and to share these golden pages of Sri Ramachandramanas. To all of the pundits who have come, to all of the sponsors, to all those who have prepared, to all those who have cooked food, to all those who have made an effort to invite a friend or relative to join us in Yadavya. To those who couldn't be here for one reason or the other. To all the musicians, I ask you to put your hands together, give them all the love of the world. Fantastic to you. Mahadev, Sister, Ganesh, Anthony, Urbalaji, Urbalaji, Bhaya, I keep forgetting his name. Vikram, Vikramji, Mandiri, all of you. If I have missed any names, please forgive me. It's always Again, emotional to come to this part of the idea. Because tomorrow morning, this same time, or tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, we would not see each other. But we can always go back and, in a flash of memory and come back to what we, have been, what we did over the past weekend. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing and being part of this glorious idea with you. We'll do one pattern before we close, but let me say that. Until we meet again, if I want to continue to enlighten you, continue to uplift you, remember to love all and serve all. And from Pandit I love you all very much. And we'll see you again soon. Jai Shri. Let me hear what you have to sing now, okay? There's a lot of women who can dance as well. It's quite good.
You know, you get married, Panditji's do our weddings. You buy a home, Panditji's comes and do pujas to bless our homes. You have a baby, Panditji's are there to bless our families. Someone passes away, Panditji's are there to conduct his services and the one year's anniversaries. And those are just a few things I've mentioned. So, please, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the community, let's give all these Panditji's in this room a round of applause. And thank you for the same work you do in our community. And equally, Seva for Life has been doing tremendous work throughout the years in helping those who are in need. And it takes very special people to dedicate their time to do this kind of work, because not everyone has that kind of time to do it. And thank you for giving up your family time to helping those in need. And I also brought a donation check for Seva for Life to continue the work that you do and everything that you do for all the community. So thank you, everyone. something else, but we all want peace, we all want happiness, and as I did talk about, these are some of the characteristics of Seva for life. May I ask all of the directors, all the members of Seva for life, if you can kindly stand please, all of you together. tell you the impact of the work that you do and bear me, give me a few minutes here to let you know. The impact goes way beyond what we can justify in our lives. Can you go with all of that? This morning, as I sat there with a Bahenji, and I talked to her, we chat a little bit of what Seba is all about. And this senior, this sister, open her wallet, put her hand in her pocket, and saw in her wallet, she had $50, and said, Bhaiya, here, take it, take it. What better it is, I can take $50 and go put it there, or I can take $50 and give them, and they can go take care of God's children. For my sister, Vidya Singh, sitting down there, coming in here for the first time, Thank you so much, Bahenji. Give her a round of applause. This $50 is like 5,000 or 500,000 to some people. It means a lot to her. But she opened her wallet and she gave it to us. Her brother just handed us $600. This is a man who never stopped Thank you so much. And sometimes I feel, at the near, I feel so bad approaching him. Because it's every week I'm going, I, you know, I do these things, 
And every week you approach the same people, but he never said no. And I'll take 30 seconds, and he called me one day. He said, Padaji, can I stay? How are you doing? Fine. And we're talking. He says, I'm driving from the airport. I just picked up a body. And it has nobody here. So I'm going to the Indian stores to buy all the outfit so we can give. These are the things he does. I know many times there are people who went there and they cannot afford. And what did he do? You know the rest of the story. Thank you, Bayaji. So for all of you right now, brothers and sisters, wherever you're sitting, Hi Roy, may I kindly ask, I know I heard that that project costs approximately 100,000 Canadian. Where are we right now approximately in terms of how much we've already had? We are around 15,000. We have $85,000 more to go so we can realize this for our daughters. And I say our daughters because I made a profound statement last night of how they can impact our lives. I will leave you this with this today. If all of us could go back to our individual families, there are two brothers, there are three sisters, maybe your in-laws, and if 85 of us can raise $1,000 within our families, within our families, it's only maybe all of us putting $100 together, can we make a positive impact on those children's lives? Yes or no? Yes? You think so? Let me tell you what Seva for Life have done. All of you know we all have daughters, we have sisters, and we have mothers. And if you could think in the remote areas of India, when there is no privacy of even a toilet or a bathroom, and our young daughters are running around, not well dressed, and they are being taunted at. And Saver for Life was able to take $500 Canadian and provide for homes for 108 of those families. And you've seen last night some of the images. When Saver for Life can go and take somebody's hand and the rest of the population say, no, 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 they're untouchables. You can't bring them in. Pariji, is that so? And Pariji said, no, they are to come in and eat with us. Come, come sit with me, eat with me. And then they're backing off. And all of a sudden, because of what Saving for Life is able to do, we come together as a and we change the concept and the way of thinking in their community to allow those souls to also sit and partake of food. All of us, if we are to check our garbage bin or food bin on our food garbage bin, and you're to open, half of it is filled but sometimes you open your fridge and it's spoiled and you throw it away. Yet, some of those children cannot even get one meal to eat. Brothers and sisters, I've said this earlier, God has blessed us all with enough religion, with enough. All I ask of you, if today you can make a pledge, you don't have to have the money today, but if you see the desire in you that you can say, Veta, I'm going to give $50. I'm going to give $100. Whatever you can give towards this organization so that they can continue God's work, Krenanto Vishwam Aryam, to make this 
universe to make this world global. How do we do it? Say that. How do we do it? It doesn't matter which country we go to. All of us are children of God. So tonight, today, sorry, on the 26th of May, we want to make sure that all of these noble souls who are giving their time, by today, if we can, all of us, we come in. We have not yet gone to our families to get that kind of money. I know some of us are pensioners, but we have our children that we can talk to, to try to help. This is an institution. This is equivalent to a mandir, because we're taking our girl children to educate them when otherwise Go marry them off at age 14, and then sometimes are abused. Here, give them the tools necessary so that they can change lives also. We know many orphanages in Guyana, and I have experience because I work with them, where those orphans today are doctors and lawyers and helping to change life because somebody gave them a chance. I've always said that somebody give me a chance to do what I do. Oh God, let me give some of them a chance now. How many of you would like to join with me and make a pledge today for us, for us to help this organization? A financial pledge. See, look at that, brothers and sisters. So, can we all give them a round of applause. Say it again. We are all we are all part and parcel of this organization. Today it is not a lecture art today. We have envelopes at the back there and put in money and lecture art be part of the donation towards Save for Life. Are you proud of it? Thank you all so very much. And then, Rupert, can you come up, please? I would like the Roger to speak on behalf of Save Up for Life. Padiji has, Padiji has been one of the defining force of this organization. There are many, many mandirs and many organizations who have called upon me. And since the day that this organization called upon me, I'm there because I've watched how they spend. Yes, 100% of the money. When you go to India, whose money do you pay? use to pay your ticket? Bhairai, whose money do you use? When you go to downtown to feed people, whose money do you use to put gas in your car? Not a dime of what you gave will go towards any of these expenses. In fact, Save Up For Life, through my poet, have given me thousands and thousands of masks that I, I took. And I drove all the way to London, Ontario, and I took the different Mondays. Then we had sanitizers, and we had uh, those canister buckets of it that we have given all through COVID to all. We could have just said, well, we've got these things, you know, just give it elsewhere. There are Muslim organizations that came and picked up for me at the warehouse in Brampton. Seva, not Hindu, not Muslim, not Christian, Seva for life. Panajou. Thank you, Panajou. Respect the honesty, but it Neelia Prasad, Swamiji, my fellow pundits, Kirtan Mandali, brothers and sisters. Today is an extraordinary day. You know, as we sit in the mandir over here, because I had a stroke, so I'm sitting a little high. 
but in my sight from where I'm sitting, I'm seeing that beautiful picture of Bhagwan Ram. Jai Shri Ram. Look how handsome he's looking. He's looking at you and smiling. He's looking you in the eye to see what your decision is going to be like. After Panditji have narrated such beautiful katas and draw a reference for Sivaka Life. Sivaka Life is the example and is trying to live that example of that Supreme Lord Prabhu Shri Ram. You know Prabhu Shri Ram in his journey when he was in Banwas, as a prince, as Mariyara for children, as he meet people throughout his journey in the forest, he greeted him with such kindness and humility. He didn't say, you know, I'm a king, I'm a prince, how dare you talk to me? He was the one who was always quiet. His brother Lakshman was the defensive one. He was always protected. Today we are at the Bharat Seva Ashram, where we have Guruji sitting over here looking over what we are doing. And such a wonderful audience. Uh, what did Bharat do? When Sri Ram was not here, he was looking after the affairs and the well being of the citizens of Ayodhya and surrounding the areas. Today we are asking and seeking from you, you heard all the speakers, you saw the slides, and we are asking you to reach out to your families, not just to you, but like Panjji says, if 85 or 100 people reach out to their families over here and resourcefully collect 100 dollars each from one of them, we need to raise a thousand dollars per family and we could achieve the school for our little daughters, the future of the world. Look at Devi Durga Mata. Last night I woke up and reference to the Shri Mata. To all the Devi Matas that we are trying to protect, to give them an opportunity to become some of the most powerful people in the universe. The women force and the purpose of the Sri Ram Charitamayas, when Bhagwan Ram came, what was his major purpose? There are many stories in the Ram Charitamayas, but what was his ideal message? His ideal message was to free women, that one woman and one man. Not two women, or three women, or four women. To have the ideal family, that is why when Sita Mata wasn't there, he lived a pious life in search of Sita Mata. Today we are trying to build a school, or this home, this dwelling, to protect our young women to give them an opportunity to achieve an education so that they could aspire to become the most powerful leaders in the world. This is the purpose of Seva for Life. To feed the hungry, to close the needy, to provide water as a resource, to put the heat shelter so we can protect them. To protect our little sons and daughters. I can't tell you it's something that you have to experience yourself. That my first experience in India 
was 4.30 in the morning when I heard Kirsten and I was like, oh God, I'm late. And you know, we don't have no hot water over here. Water is colder than the lake, the lake water over here. And we had to go take a quick shower. Roy Pike has said, hi, everybody's out here. We're going to take a quick shower. And as I come outside, I almost run back inside because the place was pitch dark and I only see little eyes. Those little eyes peeking out through the dark. And there was like two, three hundred kids who knew that we were coming to that village was there, was present. And all we had, we ran back inside and in the suitcase we were advised to take some candies and biscuits. And we ran inside and grabbed these things and handed these little children. And they are so grateful for that candy and that biscuit. We didn't know what else to do. And you know, a lot of people say when you go to India, you have to be careful. It's true, you have to be careful. But our security forces was over 250. That they were surrounding me anywhere we go. As we walk in the various village, they were with me. Our coordinator, Pankaj Pai, who is in India, he said to me, he said, Panditji, they all want to go. I said, no problem. My hand is there. We had other brothers there. My group was there. We said, get the rickshaws. We will pay for them to take the children. Because they have such a joy to spend with me. You know, I didn't really care if going to know five-star hotel or seven-star hotel. I was right there, sitting and eating with these children. And the other funny thing is, that although they are hungry, they make sure that they prepare food for me. When we sat over there, and they serve us. You know, they didn't want to take anything. They don't want to eat anything, because of the kindness that they have. Today or tomorrow, if they find out that we are coming back to India, the, the villages for weeks, they are coming to the, to the school over there to make sure that we are coming. And when we are leaving, we have to hide and leave because they don't want you to leave. Where else would you find that type of love in your life? When I see the children, I say they are mine. I claim them because it belongs to him. So helping Sewa for life Becoming part of Sewa for Life is serving those children and serving the communities. I want to make it, you know, I want to say thanks to all the league. We spoke earlier on, and one of the things that I am fearful of that most people when we go to the wonders and them, they say when the Rodra is coming to take the devotees. I can assure you, I'm not a, I'm not here for that purpose. My purpose is to bring awareness for the suffering, for the people who does not have food. That's my purpose. Clothing and a place to live. We try to save off a life together with all these beautiful people who is part of the Save Off a Life team. I can't even afford to single them out. Like when she says, you know, there's only love. And every one of them, every one of the members, this is how they are. I have never seen people like this in my life. We have a project going on, and people say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But then he was asking me, uh, uh, Dr. Lake was asking me yesterday, uh, what's the preparation for the food? And I said, I have no clue. <laughs> because one of my wedding team was hand, they made the arrangement. I want everybody to put their hands together and give all your aunties and mothers a hand. Before I hand over back uh, this mic, I want to say special thanks to the management team of the ashram and to the gurus who taught, you know, the principle of the ashram. Please always support places like this. When you have your own private functions, your anniversaries, your birthday, this will give us the opportunity to grow a save of a life. 
You know, I want to say thanks to Panachi. You know, Panachi Neil, it's really a funny story with him. I just want to share it with you to see the kind of individual he is. Our president called me up, and I was with my wife shopping in Kitchener because I live in Kitchener. Well, when I stayed shopping, she went to groceries, and I was sitting in the car. So the president called me and said, Panachi, you know, our funds is very, very low, and we got to do something. So I said, okay, no problem. I don't know where Panadine was, I called him. And I spoke to him one time and said, Panadine, we want to do a fundraiser. There was no hesitation in his voice. He said, yes, just give me the dates. So I called up the president and said, Panadine, he said, he will do a concert. Not a problem. And so we started to raise funds for Sewer for Life. I want to let you all know one other thing. Sewer for Life doesn't raise any money or have any fundraiser where anything that is not pleasant or subtweak is there. No alcohol, no meat. This is how we raise money. Whether we raise five dollars or five thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars. This money has to be prasad. As you see, the Panaji did this yeshi today to, to inaugurate this building. How? With puja, through my all my Mahenshi, to put together this beautiful program. Again, I, want to, I don't want to single out anybody, so I want to say thank you all very, very much. And actually, I do want to single out one person, Vaivish, our Vice President. You know, we really threw him under the bus a lot there. Because, you know, we try to give him some work to do. And our vice president never backs down. Never, never, never backs down. No matter, he called me for the separatist thing and I'm giving him that. You know what I mean? But, to show you the kind of unity that we have within our brothers, these are some of the examples of the people. No matter what I say, or what I do, or how upset I am, he does he said, okay, Panaji. Right, and he carries on. So thank you. And to my brother, Joe, Papa and Joe Jaglam, there's not a time I can even call on him. When I call on him, he said, okay, Panaji, no problem. Whatever. And he's always available to do that. And to my other young brother here, Panaji, thank you very much for taking me to Panaji Vishnu. Jay, thank you very much for supporting me. And to all the Panas and all the Mandir, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Panaji. And before I bring up Dr. Lake, I would like to take a minute and address our brothers and sisters who are online, watching us and listening to us. Because Save Up for Life is not only in this Mandir, it's not only Canada. The work that we do is all across this world. And if any one of you brothers and sisters that you're listening to us right now, and you feel inspired, you're looking for a medium where you can also give some dawn, give some of what God has allowed you to have, and you don't know where to go, then go to www.saverforlife.com, research about us, and reach out, their uh, email address is there. Reach out and someone will get back to you so you can participate. To all of our brothers who are in there, and you are an extension, you are a part of Save for Life, thank you for what you do there for us. There are 14 wells, uh, sweet water wells that Save for Life has already done in India, helping families. To all of those who have worked with it within this, so, and we cannot give you a physical hug. We ask you to take a spiritual hug from us as we say thank you for all the work you do. Our uh, our Paya, Dr. Lake has some presentation he wants to make. Come up, Haji, and uh, let's give a big round of applause. <laughs> Blessed uh, the Holies. Um, yes, speak about Sue and Arai, the shining words. 
just <laughs> above my head. We have six skylights here. And Panichi, uh, um, salutation to you. I am here to make a presentation. We are not wealthy, uh, but I want to present to you a wealth of knowledge. And um, before I do so, I was reminded by the Vice President, yes, we do endorse uh, what Save for Life is doing. I always say, this is what our ashram stands for, Bharat Seva Ashram, to nurse the sick, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, educate the underprivileged. And these are the, the our motto and Seva. So when we see someone is doing, following in our footsteps, um, uh, hats off to them. Now I have in my hand here a book entitled The Portrait of a Saint. Padiji, this is the Guru Swami Purananda Ji who brought Bharat Sevastam Shanga in the West and to live in all the major countries in the world. Here is a recap of his life I would like to present to you. And um, a book we call the Hindu Bible of the West Indies, the second man to Swami Guruji in Gandhi Swami Aksharanda, Aksharanda who runs the Seva Arab, SVN, Saraswati Vida Niketan. When he when I we rewrote this book, he said this is the indeed um, this book is the code of Hinduism, the Hindu talk. I would like to present these two uh, books to Pandit today for what he is doing, for establishing, for helping people like Seva for Life, and we would like to know, you to know Pandit Ji, who may be able to sponsor you and bring you right back to this ashram to work. <laughs> And um, I have one more presentation to make. I'll just hand this to Panichi with all due respect. Panichi. Thank you. God bless. And I have my, have my wife to come. I want to say this to her wife that to this young man and, and his committee, I can call him all up. I will present the book to him with the with this caution. I want him to go and be another Swami Purananda. But if you have to be on the school, or do you know our school that Guruji established? Yes? Nobody knows the school? Hindu College. And you know why you say Hindu? Because he wants the word Hindu to be in the tip of your tongue. Uh, raise the consciousness of Hindus. That's why Hindu tongue, Hindu college, everything for him was Hindu to raise the consciousness of Hindus. The word is, I feel blessed for, to have all of you here. Children of God, I bow to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bharat Sevasran Sangaki. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters, as we come to a close, I'll take one minute. Is anyone here from Guyana? <laughs> Anybody here from Guyana? <laughs> so, May 26th yes. is your Independence Day. <laughs> Today is our Independence. And Mother Guyana, Mother Trinidad, Mother India, is all mothers to us. Join with me in one verse as we think of that mother Kayana.
we move straight into our tea now as we culminate and we put the lid tower on these festivities. But really and truly, the lid is only because of the activities. But in that goblet, in that lid, are the spiritual knowledge and the savor that we are yet to perform. Okay, now we will to Guru Arti, followed by General Arti, and we close the prayer. Ask Christina, Dr. Christina, to do Mark, Bhai Kumar, and then Vinash, will you all come to do the Arti? Um, Chelsea, um, oh, Tina, come on to the stage. Now, Chelsea, what are you doing? Thank <laughs> you.
Jesus, our gratitude, thank you. Solace, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we have come before you night after night this morning to sing your praises, to chant your glories in these scriptures. From whom names are too many to be called. So we ask you to bless every single soul who has read, drink from the cups of your nectar. The nectar of bliss that we simply touched. The drops of during this journey. Prabhu, we ask that your guiding hand to be upon one and all those joining us virtually as well. Those who could not be here for one reason or the other. To all those who are sick and suffering, Prabhu, Feel the love that emanates this ashram this morning. May that love overpower ends as any illness, any distraught that we have to those lives that we impact. May we impact those lives on any basis. From whom we offer prayers to save our life. And this wonderful organization that is indeed save our life. May this cause continue for generations and generations and generations to come. To all my brother families and some of my as well, participating in this year, in performing with students, in whatever way anyone has contributed, we say, Prabhu, in your name, we are guiding hands to be a part of one and all. Prabhu Sri Rajanji, in your honor, Lord, in your name, this year has been dedicated to your feet. Prabhu, we ask you to guide hands, to achieve, to help us to build and to grow, and to empower, to uplift, to nurture those that are in need, the hungry, the poor, the downtrodden, the forgotten. May every one of us, O oh Lord, lighten and enlighten us, spark love that exists in our hearts, and the one commodity in this world that we have an infinite supply of. Let us always love all and serve ourselves this day. Nirindi Sudo Eta Nirindi Sudo Thanks for watching.